We all know in the game of golf, you are allowed 14 clubs to make up your bag to go and play 18 holes to shoot the lowest score possible. What if I told you you only needed one? Yes, that's right, guys. This is the all-in-one golf club. This has 11 settings, and we're gonna get out here today at Waterfront Golf Club and see just what we can score with it. And we are gonna jump in the simulator room and see how far this club goes on this settings, because I know that is what you all want to see. Look at that go. <laughs> Guys, if you've not seen this before, this is the Q Golf Golf Club, and it is rather interesting. You'll see how we can move that angle here to get different lofts, to hit different distances, and we also have an extended grip so that we can either hold it right at the end for a longer lever, we can hold it further down, further down, or even further down. So the interesting thing with this is, as you can see, we have P here for putter, so that now has five degrees, as you can see there. Looks very, very interesting. I'm not gonna lie, I have hit this with full shots in the simulator room to see how far it goes, because why wouldn't you? And then we can start to kind of move this round a little bit. So we have a hybrid setting there. I move it again, we have a seven iron setting. Move it again, we have a nine iron setting. Sand wedge and even a 64 degree lob wedge. Now you may think that's all it's got. We actually have settings in between these. So you can go eight iron, you can go nine iron. You can go pretty much wherever you want. I think we will start with the hybrid setting here on the first hole. Guys, get in the comments below, what do you think we're gonna shoot? I'm gonna take on a par four, par five, par three combination. And all I need is this and well, a sleeve of golf balls. I could bring one golf ball, but um, I've not swung a club in a few days because courses have been closed. So I thought I would bring a sleeve of three. I need a glove and I need a solemn T-peg. This is the unbreakable T-peg as well, right? I also have an extra one of these I'm going to give away to a subscriber. So guys, make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed. Throw a like on this video for me and comment below what are we going to shoot in today's video for par four, par five, par three, and you'll be with a chance of winning one of these clubs. I'm also going to have a match with the spare one before we give it away. Comment below who would you like to see me play. I'm going to take on Chris because I think Personally, I think Chris would hate this, so it's going to be perfect for television. But then, who do you think I should play with this club? Right, first of all, Laura, come in, let's show them what this looks like down at the ball. To be honest, in the hybrid setting, I quite like this. It looks just like a normal hybrid. It's got quite a lot of loft on there. You can see we've got loads of room behind the club here, so it should be nice and forgiving. And with the grip, I'm going to use all of that real estate. I'm going to hold it right to the end. When you go down the clubs, obviously, then that's going to help hit different distances. Guys, spoiler alert, the distances are insane when we get in the studio. I'm going to talk bounce later on as well, because that's something which this club is all about. Can we hit the fairway on the opening hole? Swing weight feels incredible with this graphite shaft. I do have it in 80 gram regular flex. Obviously, it's going to be 80 gram because the length we've got and you need to grip down for those distances. Guys, do you want a draw or a fade? I think looking at, there's no offset on this, which is quite a hindrance. So I'm gonna go with fade, aim up the left side. Oh yeah. Check that out for a ball fly. That was actually a little bit toey as well. And that is up there. And the best thing now, all I need to do is walk on. So as you can see, one of the great things about this club is you don't need, you don't even need a bag. All I'm doing is carrying this club round and this for an opening tee shot, I'm not going to lie, is quite phenomenal. Middle of the fairway, we've probably hit this around 200, and I reckon I've got about 140, 150 yards in. I've not brought a bushel today, so I've not got a bag to clip it onto. A little bit of an oxymoron there, but I'm going to spin this round and we're going to go 7 iron set in. Now, in the launch monitor, the numbers were very accurate and more consistent than I anticipated. 7 iron set in, and guys, if you watch my channel a lot, you will know that 7 iron for me is around 165. If I can hit a 165 shot with this, I'll be really happy. Felt really solid. That's almost on the line. Nice high big fade. It's certainly traveling. Oh, 172 carry there. And if this spins around 6,000, I think we've got something. Yeah, I spin it at 4,000. Quite a low spin. I would expect that. So, get that in the right setting. That's one thing you can tell straight away if you are in the wrong setting, and it is placing as well, so we'll give that a clean. Now, when you do add more loft, you start to see a little bit more offset. So I don't feel like I need to aim left and cut it here. Ball's above my feet. I'll hit just a nice straight one, hopefully to the middle of the green. Chip grip down it a bit. That's one thing to remember, or it'll go too far. 
Oh, it's just fading a bit. That is missing the green on the right. Great strike though, that's flag high up on the right hand side. Let's test this club to see just how it works when we do put it in what's going to be my favourite setting. 64 degree lob wedge. Oh. Right, so you can see we've just missed the green on the right hand side here. And this is where I've not actually practiced with this club too much. I've not hit a putt with it. I've not hit a chip with it. I do know how far it goes. You'll see we're exactly pin high here. A huge amount of bounce on here, which is designed to help you around the greens. We've not drawn a bad lie, but it's not a fantastic lie. So, can't imagine I'm gonna get much spin, but there's plenty of loft here. Oh, pop up. Never. <laughs> now, Chris would absolutely hate this because he hates the idea that loft is your friend. But you'll see now if we come in, I'm just going to pop this into the putter setting. And I'm already starting to understand that obviously moving it one way gets you straight into that setting. So speed golf is an option here. Grip down on this putter, roll that in for a par, and the dream is still alive for a fantastic round of golf with the all-in-one golf club. So I first came across this club on Instagram. The first thing I thought was, wow, this looks so cool. I need to get my hands on one. Luckily, they've sent me one. So guys, thank you so much for that. Make sure you check out their Instagram. It is on screen now. Um, we've tried hybrid setting. Let's try a little bit lower loft than that. Let's see how far we can pump it up this par five. It's a cold winter's day. We're off the white tees. So I'm going to go in between putter and hybrid, which I think is pretty much there. Oh, is that on? Which I think is about there. That is not a lot of loft. I'm going to use the entire shaft length for the shot. Stand nice and wide, tee the ball nice and high. I like a driver. See if we can get this maybe even turning over a bit. Not turning over. It's always got that little low cut to it. That's going to be okay up the right hand side in the rough. I'm going to try and hit another one with my spare ball. See if I can get it drawing. There's no offset on here whatsoever. If Laura comes in and shows us what this looks like at the top of the ball with even less loft, I'm not sure how I would get that turning over particularly. I do need to take the mud off the ball though because uh, that's going to deviate a little bit too much as well. Right, I'm going to stand nice and closed. Can we open the shoulders and get this pumping up? Yes. Even that's tried to hold on, it's tried to go right. But that's gone absolutely miles. And again, pick me tee up and I'll meet you at the ball. Well, I'm really enjoying this and I hope you guys are at home as well. Make sure to throw a like on this video and subscribe if you are. But if I had one criticism of this, because nothing's perfect, it would be that amount of offset when it's in a low loft setting. Obviously most golfers, high handicap, mid handicap, their miss is to the right. So it may not suit you too much. But I think for a laugh, I think if you're going to try and play a quick round of golf, and not take yourself too seriously. This could be something to really look at for a bit of fun. What do we need? Probably gonna need a seven iron. Doesn't take long, so I'll not need to do it too quickly. Right, as you can see, a little bit to the right hand side and the weather, um, I mean, golf courses have been closed actually, but not a bad distance. Take a drop off that path. Now I'm gonna try and just kind of get up there as far as I can. I'm not gonna try and go for this, it's far too far out. I will probably make a hash of it. We'll play it as a three shotter. Can we break par? I'm thinking if we can par this, get this out of the way, then play a worldie on the par three, that's going to be our best chance. We're set at seven iron. Tell you what, just come and look at this because that would have been absolutely catastrophic. I put the club down and that was right behind it. That would have been an absolute nightmare, wouldn't it? That's come out exceptionally well. And again, I keep talking about the bounce on this club. It's really, really helping, not just for the short game, but for shots like that where you've not got a great lie. That amount of bounce has really helped me get the ball airborne towards the green. We'll walk on. So interestingly, I found myself not knowing what to do with myself as I'm walking to find my ball. We are definitely favoring the right-hand side of the golf course here. But I quite like this, I could get used to this. No heavy bag, no 14 clubs, no kind of taking myself too seriously to get a score. Got around 100 yards in here. I'm gonna put this in the pitching wedge setting, which is just between the nine and the sand wedge. I'm really glad that I followed the guys on Instagram as well because I wouldn't have known it had 11 settings had I have not done that. Again, we're wrong side of the path here, but I don't particularly mind. Can we just get this anywhere on the green? Gives ourselves a chance at birdie. 
grip it down. You see, I've stood at it there and I'm already thinking I'm too far up. I need to grip this down the club here. Almost looks like a, a big hybrid wedge. Sit. That's going to be a long way away, but we're on the green and we're putting with a chance at birdie. Again, it's gone a little bit right on me. Definitely finding that lack of offset is hindering potentially where the ball goes. Good job the trouble's left on this course and not right. So this is going to be quite a difficult birdie putt. In fact, I'm not really looking forward to the chances of two putting, but I'm asking myself the same question as I always ask myself when playing golf. Am I enjoying myself? And the answer to that has to be yes. So is it a good product? Let you decide when we finish this hole. See, from this distance, quite a difficult putt compared to the only putt we have hit. And because it's so long, you can't really get over the ball. Tell you what though, that is tracking. Oh, you know what? That is absolutely awesome. I was thinking if I can get it anywhere near Laura's shadow, I've done exceptionally well. That came off re like a, the roll. I expected that to skid and it hasn't done at all. So two par puts within, well, a foot and a half of each other. That is two pars. Can we make that miraculous birdie on the following par three? Guys, let's jump in the simulator room back at Woolley Park. Let's see just how far this club did go in its various settings. And then let's see if we can attack this par three. Remember, if you want to win one of these clubs, subscribe, like, and comment below what we're going to score. So guys, before we finish off this round of golf, let's see just how far this golf club goes in all of its settings. And yes, we are going to test it off a tee in the putter setting because I know that is what you all want to see. This is playing in hardly any degrees whatsoever. We'll kick things off with lob wedge, guys. I'll talk you through the numbers really quickly. Obviously, we want to grip down here on the lob wedge and just try and get a nice, probably 100 yard, maybe 90 yard shot. So lovely feeling shot there. I'm surprised that I got under it as well as I did. 70 yards, that's probably about right for a lob wedge in fairness. Spinning at 9,800, that is great backspin numbers for such a short shot. And I'm just gonna try and hit a good shot with all of them. So now we'll move to the sand wedge setting. That's how easy it is. I'll grip up it just a little bit more. Again, try and get maybe a 100 yard shot. You know what, that felt really, really good. I'm really pleased with dispersion so far as well. And this is over 100 yards, this is 115. So let's move this into the nine iron setting there. That's how simple that is. I would expect with a nine iron around 140, 130, obviously it's gonna massively depend where I hold this on the grip. I have struck that really well. That's a little bit right, a little bit high and floaty. One, ooh, 130, pretty much on the nose, 133 finish. Spinning at 8,000, good numbers, seven iron set in. And guys, if you watch my channel a lot, you will know that seven iron for me is around 165. If I can hit a 165 shot with this, I'll be really happy. Felt really solid, that's almost on the line. Nice high, big fade, it's certainly traveling. Oh, 172 carry there. Now this hybrid setting, you'll see we don't have a lot of loft on here at all. Can we get this up around 200 yards? This is how you are gonna play this club off the tee. Come on. Ball position forward, change all that. Use plenty of this shaft length now. Really get this moving forwards. I've hit that really well. It's just going right. One thing I find with this sometimes, it does just want to sneak right for you. There's not a lot of offset on here at all because of the design, but that's gone a long way, guys. That's gone 231 yards, 210 carry, spinning at 2,700. I'm gonna hit one more with that because I really wanna see if we can get this turning over and drawing. Got to draw. There we go. That felt really good. And again, that's pitching at 210. Now let's, for a bit of fun, test it in the putter setting. Oh, wow. You know what? That felt really good and it's gone <laughs> absolutely nowhere. No. Um, apparently, look at that go. I think that might be a glitch, Chris, do you think? That's got to be a glitch. You've carried it. 
<laughs> uh, I'm not too sure what's happened there, but apparently I've carried it 300 and something yards with a ball speed of just 115. Right guys, let's get back out on the golf course with this all-in-one golf club and see just what we can score. I'm not gonna lie, this is going a little bit better than I anticipated. I've just stepped on this tee and I've still got it in the putter setting. I wonder if anyone's ever played with these, stepped on the tee and gone, eh, definitely not. We don't need this for 150 yards. We've got about 150 yards here. I'm gonna put it in between the seven and nine, so about an eight iron setting. I'm gonna aim at the middle of the green. The flag is on the right, as you can see here. Can we fade this in to that flag and be a hero? Come on, James. Oh, it's just a bit right again, every time. Oh, that's annoying because that's exactly flag high. Really nice compressed divot as well there. I'm gonna hit one more just for fun, to be honest. See if we can aim right every time, just a bit. Oh, there we go. There we go. That could go in. <gasps> so close and again all I do I pick the tee up and we walk to the hole so interestingly there maybe I didn't have enough club I've hit that really well I thought it was going to be in I'm not gonna lie we are 40 feet away as you can see but it is bang on line to the flag the first shot we hit which I'm going to play for you guys is over this way and it's exactly the same distance showing how accurate and consistent this club can be and this is where we probably do need that loft I'm going to go sand wedge I'm not going to go 64 can we save a par? Oh, it's just come out a touch left, you know. Played that really nicely, and then that bounce has really helped me. That bounce just glides along the floor no matter what lie you've got. The one thing is you do get mucky hands with this. This is for level par for the video. A little bit of left to right. We've been good with the putter. We have. Oh! Guys, I'm going to finish that off. That is one over par using the Q Golf all in one golf club on a par three, par four, par five. I thought the par three may well have been the saving grace. Unfortunately, it hasn't been today. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like this video if you want to win one of these. And comment below, did you get it right? One over par. See you tomorrow.